So you want to work towards your trailblazer weapon. However, the new persona urgent quest is just destroying you. You're taking 15 minutes, 20 minutes to complete it. And it's a pain in the butt. People are dying left and right and you don't know what's going on. But don't worry, in today's video, I'll explain everything you need to know about this urgent quest. But first of all, if you're new to the channel, I upload PSO2 content daily. We're so, so close to my goal of 20,000. It'd mean the world to me if we can hit that goal before the end of November. There's like four days left, so uh, please, please, please help me out a bit. But anyway, without further ado, let's begin the video. So the first thing you need to know about this urgent quest is you need damage and you need to be tanky. Well, lucky for you, the game is literally giving you all the gear you need in order to do this urgent quest. So first of all, don't forget to pick up your Atlas EX weapon. Yes, it is a gunblade, but don't worry, I'll show you how to exchange it into whatever weapon you want. Second of all, pick up your units. You will get the offs units for free with six augments on them. And they are actually really, really good augments and they're well balanced for any class. So it doesn't matter if you're a range class, a melee class, a tech class, this unit set will work for everything. So for those who don't know or forgot how to get the units, it's quite simple. You need to come to main quest over here and you need to do the limited time quest. So over here, the Dark Reverie Consume Starlight, you need to do this nine times and you'll get all three pieces. When you do three runs, you'll get the arms, when you do six runs, you get the back piece. And when you do nine runs, you get the leg piece. And thus you'll have all three pieces. As for the Atlas EX weapon, you're gonna need to come to recommended quests and you need to complete five of these recommended quests. You'll get three recommended quests per day. So you're gonna have to do two days worth of recommended quests before you can get your weapon. All right, so now that you've got your units and your weapon, the next step is to exchange your gun blade into whatever weapon you want. So you can come over here to Ziggs, talk to him and go to change weapon category. When you click on this, you'll be greeted with this menu over here. Then you want to come to the second option, which is change EX series. Click on this and you'll be able to select whatever weapon you want. So for example, let's say that I want to switch it to a katana because I'm a braver. You're going to click on this and go exchange. So at the very beginning, you're going to notice here that, hey, my gunblade didn't show up. What's going on? And that is because the gunblade is locked. You need to unlock it. So when we go back to our menu over here, press I and unlock. Once it's unlocked, we can talk to Ziggs, go back to change category, EX weapon, and katana exchange. And boom, you'll notice that now you can exchange a gun blade. You put 999 Goldnia as well as 999 Safhards. You hit exchange and boom, you'll automatically exchange your gun blade into whatever weapon you want. However, before you do that, do keep in mind that this weapon has an augment factor of S4 Lifesteal Strike, which will allow you to absorb 1% of the damage dealt as HP when attacking. However, it's capped at 30 HP per hit. So if you do want that, you can add that onto the Atlas EX weapon before you exchange it to your new weapon. So in order to do that, you're gonna need two other weapons with six sockets. So it's very simple. You're simply gonna come here. So over here, I just took two random Dio weapons and now I'm gonna talk to Dudu. We're gonna go to Affix Augment and we're gonna click on our Atlas Owls EX, which is our gun blade, and you're gonna put in the two random Dio weapons. You're gonna click confirm, and right here at the very top, you'll notice that your S4 Lifesteal Strike is here available. So we're gonna click on that because we want that. Also, please take Luminous Grace 2. This is very, very useful. Increases your PP recovery speed by 20% is quite a big deal. And then over here, just pick whatever stats you want. So let's say I want Precision 3, I want Stamina 3, I want Spirit 3, and I will take uh, Deafness 3. And you'll notice over here that, hey, not everything is 100%, but it's okay. What you can do is you can use an augmentation aid to boost it up to 100%. For those who don't know where to get augmentation aids, you're going to zoom all the way back out here. We're going to run all the way up these stairs to the red light district to the X-Cube Exchanger. Once we're here at the X-Cube Exchanger, you're going to talk to her, scroll to the very bottom, and you'll see right here Augmentation Aid 30% as well as 40%. So the 30% one costs 20 X-Cubes, while the 40% one will cost you 100 X-Cubes. So I don't recommend using the 40% one unless it's absolutely necessary, because it is a lot of X-Cubes. So in most cases, the 30% one is enough. Please do not mix up Augmentation Aid with Enhancement Aid. They are two separate things. The one that you want is Augmentation Aid, okay? So again, we fill this out. We're gonna go to Start, Affix, Augment, and over here, there's gonna be the Success Boosters. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a 30% one, and boom, everything is 100%, and you're gonna click Yes, 
and boom, all your augments are done. So now you have S4 Lifesteal Strike on this weapon. So now when you switch your Gunblade into your Katana or whatever weapon you want, you'll keep all of the augments that you put onto the weapon, which is going to be very, very nice because you get to keep your S4 Lifesteal Strike and you keep the S3 Luminous Grace too, which will help you quite a lot. Okay, so it's just boom, boom, and boom, and then you click exchange and it'll turn into whatever weapon you selected. All right, with the tutorial out of the way, now you're fully geared out and you're ready to kick some Persona butt. So the urgent quest we're going to be talking about is the Manevolent Void. This is the 12 man version. However, there is a chance of it dropping the four man version, which is a little bit more challenging. However, has a better drop rate for rare items. But in today's video, we're going to be focusing on the 12 man version. So let's hop over to my second monitor and I'll walk you through this boss fight. So this boss fight has three separate phases. The first two phases are random. However, the last phase will always be Persona. Zona. So what do I mean by the first two phases are random? And that is because there are four different bosses that Persona can imitate. First one is Elder, then we've got Luther, we've got Apprentice, and we've got Gemini. So you can change to any one of these four bosses. However, he will only change during the first two phases, and the last phase he will always change to Persona. So if we look at my video folder over here, you can see that I've recorded multiple runs, and you're going to see the video that I'm going to walk you through is Luther and then Apprentice. However, there's also Gemini Luther, Apprentice Gemini, Luther Elder, Luther Apprentice, Elder Apprentice, Elder Luther, and Apprentice Luther. So there are many different variations on how the boss fight will go. However, don't worry, each boss has very simple mechanics. So over here, we're going to look at Luther first. So at the very beginning of this fight, you can see that he is in Luther form. So how do I know that he is in Luther form? It's simply because he's got these little blades attached to his arms. So you'll notice that there's a red circle around here telling, hey, you should probably hit this spot. So what you want to do when he is in Luther form is you want to break both of these blades over here that are attached to his arms and then beat up his face. It's relatively simple to explain, however doing it in practice, especially if you're a melee class like me, it is a pain in the butt and a huge nightmare. Now before you guys all ask, why do I have so much HP and PP? And that is because we are using a trigger. If you use the Malevolent trigger, you will automatically get the Arcs level 3 buff which will give you a ton of PP, a ton of extra HP, and a ton of offensive and defensive stats, which will make this fight a lot easier. So see here, Luther will automatically summon these swords and constantly do the time freeze. So you constantly have to move around and iframe and dodge and just try your best to attack the little switch blades on his arms or his face. You can see that it's very, very spazzy and he moves around a lot, but just try your best and eventually he will stop moving for a second or two where you can maximize your DPS. And once you break the two blades on his arms, he will get dazed for a second and hunch over where you can start beating up his face. So let's jump cut to there. So once you break his switch blades, he will be dazed as you can see here, then you can maximize DPS, hit his face as much as you can in order to deal as much possible damage. However, once he gets back up, he's gonna get mad and he's gonna go into a rage mode. And basically you just wanna maximize DPS by trying to hit his face. It's going to be very difficult, especially if you're a melee class. I highly recommend you guys to use katana combat if you're braver. It'll make your life a little bit easier. Or you can just try to build elevation and stay up there in order to maximize damage. But you can see you're, we're just beating the crap out of the mask until we break it. Once we break it, you can see over here that he's all pissed off. But he will soon go into phase and switch his masks because we broke it. And he's going to switch into apprentice over here as you can see. Ba -ba, it's a magic trick and now he's in apprentice form so over here what I want you to notice are these little wings over here you can see that he's got an upper wing over here it's got a lower wing over here and on the other side it's the exact same thing so what you want to do is you want to target all four of these wings and quickly break them once you break them apprentice will be dazed and you'll be able to beat up on the mask so those are the five weak points that you want to break when fighting apprentice so you can see here we just broke one wing I move over to the next wing I'm going to break this one and now there are the two upper wings which are a little bit more challenging to reach as a melee class especially since I don't have katana combat at the moment it's currently on cooldown so it's going to be a little bit challenging however you just try your best and once you destroy it the boss will be dazed and boom we destroyed it 
Now the boss is dazed, again we got some time to beat the crap out of the mask. And once we finish beating on the mask, again the boss will go into enrage mode and just do silly things and all you want to do is just target the mask and deal as much damage as possible and try to avoid dying. That's pretty much it, relatively simple on Apprentice. Now before I talk about the third phase which is Persona, I also want to touch base with Gemini and Elder since that wasn't in the original footage. So if you do happen to get Gemini, Gemini is going to look like this, he's got the little happy face as his mask. However, what you want to focus on are the two little balls floating. So this little ball over here, as well as the little ball down here. Those are the two things you want to focus first. Once you destroy that, they'll get dazed, then you beat up on the happy face until he breaks. And then he'll go in rage mode and you just focus on the mask. Very, very simple. Now, if you get Elder, he'll look exactly like this. What you want to focus is his arms, the upper arms in particular. So these two arms over here, you'll notice behind them will have a red ball. So what you want to do is when he attacks with the upper arms, usually they'll stay in place for a couple seconds. And during those couple seconds, you want to beat the crap out of his arms in order to break them. Once you break both arms, he'll be dazed and you just want to beat up on the mask until the mask breaks and then again he'll go into his rage mode then you just want to capitalize on continuously beating up on his mask until he switch phases. Alright now that I've explained all four bosses now it's time to explain the last phase. The last phase will always be Persona. So you're going to get this short cutscene over here where he's going to change his mask once more however you're also going to notice that there's a heart now. You'll see that now he is in Persona, he's like, wow, look at me, I'm super duper strong. Don't worry about it. What you want to do is you just want to focus on his little heart over there as well as his mask. These are the two weak spots and everything else you can ignore. Just focus on the heart until he does a very specific attack, which I'll show you very soon. So you can see here, immediately we put a weak bullet. If you're a melee class, just press Q to lock onto the heart. So you always dash into it and thus it'll make your life super, super easy. And you just want to quickly beat that up until you break his chest open and you can deal even more damage. All right. Now, while you're beating up on his heart, you'll notice that you'll slowly chip away on his armor. And when you totally chip it away, he will get dazed and you'll get more time to beat up on his heart or his mask. Both do good damage. I think the heart does a little bit more damage if you hit it, but you know, you can probably hit both targets. You can see here that we broke the armor. Now he's dazed over and you can now beat up on his face or his chest. You'll see here that the boss gets back up. He's super mad. But again, because we're continuously attacking his heart, we're going to break another piece of his armor and daze him instantaneously again. So you really want to focus on that heart. You see now he's dazed and you'll see that his armor's totally destroyed on his chest. And so as a braver, I just want to continuously attack the heart because my upper slash will always hit the helmet. However, now he's angry and now he's going to do this special attack right here. You'll know it's a special attack because you'll see that Sierra over here will tell you, you can't let the target get that move off. You have to stop it. And this is a pure DPS check. So please make sure that you do have your Atlas EX weapon because if you don't have an Atlas EX weapon or if you don't have a strong weapon, you're going to be holding the team back and most likely not be able to clear this phase. And if you don't clear this phase, everyone on the map will die unless they're using an iframe or if they have like an Iron Will or the Atlas EX revive. So uh, yeah, you kind of want to destroy this. So you're going to see here, he's going to summon his freaking Chi Bomb right here and you have to destroy it. And the only indication on whether you're doing good or not is based off the color. You can see now it's glowing red, then it's going to turn purple and it's going to turn blue. And once it's blue, it means you're almost done. You're almost going to break it. And what you need to do is you need to break this ball before he lifts his hand. If he lifts his hand and slams it back down onto this ball, it will explode and everyone will die. So you can see here, we destroyed it just in time. However, it's not over. You can see he summons this giant chi bomb and he's going to throw it at us again. This is the second part of the DPS check. So if you pass the first one, everyone lives, everything is good. However, you also need to pass the second DPS check where he's going to summon another chi bomb and you need to destroy this as well. So once he slams it down, again, it starts glowing red, then will turn purple, then turn blue. And it's really, really tight. You guys need the damage or else you won't be able to clear this. So you can see here, we clear it, boom and immediately it will daze the boss. Once the boss is dazed, you can DPS him and he will die very, very quickly. And boom, mission complete.
and then you get this beautiful victory screen right here. Now once the fight is done, you just break the crystal over here and pray that you get something good. I was very lucky and after 20 runs I was able to get the profound katana weapon which I needed to make my trailblazer weapon. Another thing you can keep note of was that fight took around 7 minutes and 30 seconds based off this timer right here because it does start at 60 minutes. So that may be a goal that you guys may want to work towards, however again we weren't super duper organized, we just had a lot of damage. So if you guys decide to pug this, it would really help the team if you just made sure that you and your party are well geared and well equipped in order to do this urgent quest. Because if you don't destroy that chi bomb, the phase is extended much much longer. But yeah, that's pretty much all I wanted to talk about in today's video. Hopefully you guys found it helpful. If you did, I would appreciate a like and a subscribe, and I'll see you guys in tomorrow's video. Bye! What can I say except you're welcome for the heals the boosts the rest